way beyond just, you know, kind of playing a stereotype. This is full on playing a stereotype. If you aren't familiar with Ellen Wong yet, just wait. You might know her from the film Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. You might know her as a wrestler in the Netflix series Glow. I know her as the person sitting next to me also wearing a jean jacket. Yay! Canadian tuxedo. How and are you? we live on the same side of the city. And we live, apparently. we're essentially siblings. <laughs> exactly. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. Is it nice to be back in Toronto? Always. It always is nice to be back in Toronto. What's, what's yeah. one of the first things you do when you come back? Because you're, um, you're in LA? Yes, I am. And the first thing I do actually is when I get to Pearson, I get a small Tim Hortons coffee, oh. but I ask for it with a little bit of hot chocolate. Oh. Just a tad. Because when I, if you order the mocha, <laughs> it's too chocolatey, too sweet. It's not, you don't really get the coffee hit, okay, too. Yeah. So I asked for the coffee with just a little bit of hot chocolate. Okay. And they always get it. And they always get it. The mocha's a little more yeah. expensive, too, you know? Is it? So you're cutting, you're, I'm not going to oh, lie. Well, there you you're go. Cutting like 30, I... You're cutting 30 cents Great. off that thing. <laughs> That's very, very smart. Your, your breakout role was in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, if you've seen the movie or read the comics, you'll know the story very much rooted in Toronto. It almost feels like every scene has some kind of Toronto landmark in it. So how did that feel for you to have your landmark breakout role happen where you lived? It was amazing because, you know, that movie, I always say it's a love letter to Toronto in some way, too. Um, and I also learned about my own city through that movie because I guess I was just was I wasn't cool enough to know about all these hot spots before. Um, and so in some way, like my character, I was following all these cool people around and learning about life in the city. I also yeah. heard that this was the role that made your parents be okay with you being an actor. Is that right? Yes, actually. It was, I think it was just this foreign thing to them. Like they didn't understand the world of acting. Um, and there was actually this moment, um, Edgar had said, you know, you should have them come to set. And so we decided to have them come to set on a day that I was um, going to be doing all my stunt choreography. So I'd be on wires flying through the air and different things. Like, it's like really fun stuff for them. And it's scary stuff too for them, you know, to see, <laughs> see their daughters suspended from a wire. I'd, yeah. I mean, I'd be nervous. But I mean, I didn't tell them what to expect. I was just like, just come to set and you'll see everybody and it'll be really fun. And um, on the day, they showed up with this um, tiny platter of these little dessert cakes, a dozen little dessert dessert cakes. And, uh, and they thought that that's, you know, my parents thought it would be this small little room with just maybe a director, um, you know, camera guy yeah, and me. And, like they and didn't, people might need to be fed, I understand. Yeah. yeah, but they walk on and they're like, what, a hundred something people on set. And they just had no idea because it just blew their mind that it was that... It was this whole other caliber, and um, and they're like, I'm like, uh, well, we could cut up the cakes into little pieces and maybe <laughs> feed them to everybody. But they put it on the craft table, and everyone eventually did. They just went and took pieces of it. But then they ended up standing by Video Village also next to Edgar at the monitors, and I remember there was a moment. I was just flying through the air with my knives, and I looked over, and I'm like, okay, I think they are accepting this now. I think that they know that this is definitely something that I'm going to keep doing. Tell me, tell me about some yeah. of your early experiences of casting in Hollywood. In Hollywood? Oh, it's interesting. I think cause, because I started my career off with a movie like Scott Pilgrim, I, I've always been looking for a role with more of an arc because I felt like that's something that I was very lucky to have at the beginning of my career. Yeah. Um, to be able to play a role like Knives Chow, I'm playing a girl who's going through a journey. She's learning something. She's going through something. And so a lot of the times I'd get, you know, a script and say, oh, well, I don't know. She's not really going through anything. But you, you've also and talked about that you, you experienced some some typecasting in the past. Yeah, you, exactly. You're only up for certain roles. Like, like what? Yeah, well, it's, it's like what I was just saying about not getting a character that has more than a beginning, middle, and end. It's just somebody who's there to be a wheel and a bigger moving part. And, you know, I, I, I like to push for diversity within, for me, the Asian identity. Um, and that means playing roles that are very nuanced, that have backstory, mm -hmm. um, and where I feel like I'm learning something too, or my character is going through something or learning something. And a lot of the kinds of roles I was getting were more you know, just being the sidekick. Hey, I or, read like a hacker. Yeah. Oh, I get a lot of hacker roles. I mean, I don't mind playing a hacker if she's 
you get to go into her life and you yeah. understand where she's coming from and who she really is. But if your job is to just open up the laptop and, and then say something really intelligent and then disappear, like right. I, I mean, there is a per that serves a purpose too. But I feel that it can always go deeper, you know, and um, and so I look for that in in my work. I want to talk more about that in the Netflix show Glow. Um, you play the Cambodian American wrestler fortune cookie. Mm -hmm. um, Ellen Wong, I, I've read this is your first time in a role that lines up with your your own actual heritage, but I understand that your yeah. character wasn't originally written that way. What's the story here? Um, well, I saw it as an opportunity to to ask, you know, I actually, I've asked a lot in a lot of um, productions, I'll bring up, hey, uh, you know, my, my parents are from Cambodia, it'd be really interesting to have this girl who you think is just Chinese or what you, you know, with glow, she's playing fortune cooking in the ring. So that's a, a big indication of, hey, that's what people see me as, mm -hmm. right? Um, right? Here's another opportunity to show a whole other side because there's the Asian identity is, there's so many stories there and Asia is really, really huge and there's so many other countries that I can be from and it doesn't have to just be China, mm -hmm. you know? and. I thought it would be really interesting also because it's in it's set in the mid 80s. Um, a lot was going on at that time post, you know, the Vietnam War. And then also um, with the genocide that happened in Cambodia, a lot of refugees were just going into America or various parts of the world. And and so I really wanted to bring that story to light. And I talked to the creators about that. And um and I also am friends with one of the writers, Sasha Rothschild, because she was uh, a writer on Carrie Diaries. And so we just stayed friends from that. And uh, she would sort of pitch that idea in the room too, in the writer's room. And eventually they said, we're gonna do that. We're gonna make her from Cambodia. And I was, those are, it's what, two words? I'm Cambodian. And I feel like those are, that's probably the most important line or the most um, fulfilling line I've ever had in my career mm -hmm. to be able to say that. Because, you know, it's like, the Bash character, the producer, saying, no, it's not about backstory. It's it's about type. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the world that we live in. I mean, even not even just in film and television. It's in every, you know, profession, I think. It's in the world. And, um, and so it was really... I feel really lucky to be part of a show that is so responsible and aware. Like, we're really making a comment on that with humor and fun. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Glow is sort of a show about wrestling. Yeah. I think we'll, for, for conversation's sake, we'll it's say, kind we'll, of we'll about say it's about wrestling. For conversation's really. sake, we'll say it's about <laughs> yeah. wrestling. And I know, like, I, I've, I've watched wrestling from the time I think I was out of the womb. I've been watching wrestling. Mm. And it's always been. It's always been kind of problematic. It's always been kind of about type. And I don't think Fortune Cookie is any exception. When she actually goes into the ring, um, she, she, she gives off a certain stereotype. Did you worry that would be seen as problematic? Yeah, I mean, I didn't know about the world of wrestling before this show. No? No. Yeah. And so just getting the breakdown and seeing that I was going out for a character named Fortune Cookie, I I was like, uh, <laughs> what is this exactly? And mm -hmm. um, after researching the show and understanding wrestling, I was like, this is an amazing opportunity to really go way beyond just, you know, kind of playing a stereotype. This is full on playing a stereotype, embracing that and being the best stereotype ever in the ring and then getting to feel affected by it and see, you know, feel the consequences of what that um, you know, brings up How's through a character outside of the ring. And that's really, that's really cool. What, what's it like wrestling? With no res <laughs> what's it like wrestling with no wrestling experience? Well, none of us had any wrestling experience except for Kia Stevens. She plays Tame. Were you getting hurt? She, I mean, no. The thing is, it's funny. Wrestling is very gentle. It's actually like dancing. And when we learned, like we really um, took the time to learn. We had four weeks of wrestling training before we even started shooting the show. And then when we started shooting the show, we were all still going in and, and practicing and learning all the moves on days we weren't working or shooting. And, um, and we're about to do that again for the second season. So yeah, yeah. we had a lot of time of just learning how to fall. I think that was the most important thing is learning how to fall, how to keep your head up. And it just to the, got to the point where we were comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, wrestling is a team sport. Yeah. You know, you really need your other, you need your partner to help you sell 
the move. Do you watch it now? Do you watch wrestling? I now? do. You I watch do. like we're WWE all, we're, wrestling? We're going to a live show in a couple of weeks, all of us together in LA, and we're really, really excited. I've never been to a live wrestling show. Do, for, have, do you have a favorite? <laughs> um, my favorite right now is Gail Kim, actually. She's from Toronto. Oh. Yeah. Wow. She's badass. And she came to set and mm-hmm. I was all excited. She's really good friends with Kia Stevens. And so she just was like, you need to meet Gail. And so she brought her to set and it was. It was so cool. Um, the Rising Star Program at the Toronto <laughs> International Film Festival fosters emerging Canadian talent. But what it does is it gives people like you resources to mm-hmm. get their work and their voice heard. When you look at the actual films playing at the festival, I want to go back to something we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Do you still think we have a long way to go in terms of representation on screen? As Canadians? I mean, as as, as filmmakers as in the entertainment industry in general. Oh, in general. I think so. I think we're at a really good place, though. We're progressing, and it's an exciting time where I do feel like there's so much dialogue about wanting to represent what we see in real, like actual reality, mm-hmm. you know. And there's a lot of, you know, with TIFF right now, there's the Share Her Journey campaign. There, there's this TIFF Rising Stars campaign. There's a lot of talk about diversity. A lot of the talks that were going on um, with the conversations that were being set up um, at TIFF with actors and producers and writers coming in, they're all talking about diversity and having more female um, females at the forefront, mm-hmm. you know. And I think the more that we are able to talk about those things, the more we're just going to be able to see them. And we already are starting to. I mean, I read yesterday that um, Daniel Day Kim is now going to be playing um, the role that Ed Screen was going to be playing in Hellboy. Yeah, well, he uh, uh, Ed dropped out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mean something like that. That's very encouraging and mm-hmm. exciting. I've always said that I think visibility is important because when you don't see <clears throat> someone that looks like you on screen, you're not sure if you're able to do it. You're not. You don't know that you can do it, and so. I think right now we're at a place where we are seeing that and it's just only going to help the next generation of people to believe that they can enter into this world and write their stories and put them on screen. So I think it's a really exciting time. We're heading in that direction. We're not fully there yet, but there's and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. But you're you're, you're hopeful. You're, you're, I'm very hopeful. You're optimistic. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. Come Tom. back again soon.